Let's talk about five things that Tesla needs to do by the end of the year to deliver these five things in order to survive. And it's kind of weird that we're talking about survival here. The company's done very well. Model 3 is kicking butt. After the refresh, Model S and Model X is coming back. Elon Musk had settled down. So, you know, it's weird, especially we just celebrated, what, seven years since the first Model S uh, was produced. Um, and I know seven years is a long time, but at the same time, it's a very short amount of time for the manufacturer just blossom like this. Yet, we're still talking about survival. And, you know, I think if they accomplish these five things, they won't just survive. I think they will really thrive. And, and that's what we're going to talk about it coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. And of course, thank you to my Patreons right here for supporting my independent channel. Go to patreon.com slash E4 Electric to support my cause, which is really just electric car movement. Uh, I, I think it's a good cause. Anyway, let's talk about this. Uh, top five things. As you can see, I already have this queued up. Insure my Tesla. This was uh, this was part of Tesla.com when they originally partnered up with um, uh, Liberty Mutual. I tried tried getting a quote from them. Um, couldn't get it. Then I had to follow up, and I finally got it. It was more expensive than my. Farmers, which normally is one of the more expensive insurance companies anyway. Um, I checked in with a lot of people in my Facebook group for Tesla owners, over 30,000 members, and um, gotten the same feedback that was very expensive. And then one day, phew, just disappeared. So you won't see this on their website. And recently, Elon Musk said that they were working on their own insurance once again. During the shareholder meeting, I believe, a couple of weeks ago, he mentioned that they're, they're going through, they're acquiring a company. Once that's done, then they will be able to roll it out. I'm, I'm assuming it's insurance company and probably just for the sake of all the licenses and different states and stuff like that. And this is something, uh, the reason it's on my top five list is because, you know, uh, there's, there's, there are different things how we pay for our cars, right? Monthly lease payment or a purchase payment, uh, fuel uh maintenance and so forth but one of the relatively big ones especially for tesla owners is insurance uh, my insurance was about 200 dollars per month which is way more than if i was to get myself a bmw 7 series or a mercedes s class so it's just and it's been going up and up and up some of it is insurance rates but some of it you know insurance companies realizing that when a you know tesla gets in an accident the parts are very expensive and you have to wait for quite some time so they have to pay for the um for the loaner cars for rental cars and storage fees and so they've been those rates have been going up and up and up so this is Part of the cost that, by the way, Tesla itself doesn't really calculate into their savings or, you know, the real world cost of their cars when they advertise them on their website. And, you know, I've criticized them for that and quite a few people have it as well for not you know, promptly 100% displaying the real price. Uh, but if the you know their calculations just don't include this high insurance cost so i really hope they can get this done because it's important for a lot of people they get really frustrated when they have to pay more uh, for their cars the number two is uh, the factory in shanghai uh, this is the gigafactory so but i just wanted to uh, uh this is the prettiest pictures that i've i've had i know we've all seen pictures that you know, every week it's changing of the Shanghai factory that's being built really, really fast. Uh, but we need to see if they're going to finish it and if they're going to start producing cars, if it's going to have any issues. Of course, they, you know, they kind of starting from scratch from, you know, with suppliers. Will Panasonic be one of the suppliers? So we'll have to get somebody else. Um, would that be a good partnership? Are they are they able to uh, get other you know suppliers and third party providers in China? Again, this is the first time they're doing it, and pretty much all of the other legacy manufacturers have already got their sort of uh, hands dirty in um, in in that industry in there. So so you know there's there's a much uh, um, a steeper hill to climb, I believe there. Um, then people believe it's not just a matter of just building the factory, but at the same time, if they're able to achieve it they will be able to really up their sales in China because, you know, they won't have to pay, you know, really, really high tariffs. And we don't even know what's going to be in the next couple of years because we still have a tariff war 
as they call it going on with china so that is extremely important china is the number one market for electric cars so if you're not at least trying in that market you're not going to succeed globally either so that's another important thing for them to finish and start producing cars by the end of the year model threes um, that will define a lot of their future a lot of what's going to be happening in 2020 all right let's move on to number three before that of course a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by byton uh, check out their all electric suv called ambite coming to the us and europe at the end of the next year starting at only forty five thousand dollars join myself and over fifty thousand people who have already made reservations uh it's really costs zero dollars uh, there's absolutely no deposit about 60 seconds and boom you're done so go to the description of this video click on that link so you can reserve your Python today all right number three v3 superchargers now one thing you've unveiled something another thing you actually have delivered and these are all retrofits of the superchargers that are around the country and around the world they just started with their own uh, a Fremont factory where they've installed one and unveiled it only a week ago. So there's a long way to go because they have quite a few of them. But this is really going to move them forward into faster charging because now they have to compete with Electrify America here in the US and Ionity and a few other ones in Europe. So and they're all charging at a um, top rate of 350 kilowatts. And even the V3 superchargers can only top out at 250. But nevertheless, because of the uh, more, more efficient batteries and technology, Tesla can still win that uh, race and have their cars basically gain more mileage per minute uh, than their competitors. So they can still do that, but they need to roll this out relatively fast because uh, uh, people, people really have been complaining more and more. And then even this article at New York Times, and we're going to discuss it in a different video, that's kind of uh, highlighting, not very fairly, but nevertheless, it is an issue. The fact that you you know, can make a five-hour drive and still end up supercharging for over two hours on that, uh, on that trip. So this is very important. And of course, there will not be sharing power between two stalls like it is right now. It's going to be dedicated power. So that's another um a, a, another upgrade that people are definitely waiting for and it's very important that they finish by the end of the year all right number four by the way i don't know why i'm going one two three this was actually in an increasing priority so the second most important uh thing is obviously the model s and model x refresh this uh picture is a spy picture from electric that well you wouldn't call it spy it just leaked right they've already just done a refresh uh, which basically motors, the battery, uh, the computer chip, um, and a few other things. So what's calling a Rave, Raven edition. Um, and a lot of people bought it, including Eli Burton from uh, My Tesla Adventure, my guest every Wednesday. He's very happy with it, the best Tesla ever made. Um, so they've made a lot of uh, technical upgrades and people are loving it. But now there will be a refresh on the inside and maybe even on the battery side as well. Uh, but they better deliver because this refresh from what these pictures are, are, are showing is that they're going to make the uh, interior of the Model S and Model X more like a Model 3. And I think it's a mistake. I think a lot of people would rather prefer them go into more of a, a luxury interior level. And this whole uh, argument that, oh, you know, it's a simplistic because... Yeah, you know, you won't really need to drive these cars in the future, but I think people still go like, yeah, but we still want this to look uh, luxurious like a Mercedes or Beamer or Audi and so forth. So I really hope, uh, you know, I, I really hope this is not it. Also having a large horizontal monitor makes the driver reach way too far on the right. I think the vertical positioning is is much better. And again, I get that it's easier to design the interface this way and share it among all of uh, all of its models but as far as uh, actual usability I, I think this could be a mistake all right so number one and that i'm going to surprise uh, anybody with this is unveiling the semi uh, the the pickup truck and um here's a picture kind of brighten it up a little um of uh, what uh, elon told us it's going to look like we nobody really knows what we're looking at it is the front he did confirm it is the front not that it was any like questions because obviously it was a back the lights would be red um but what's what's disturbing me is that he keeps saying how it will not look like a traditional pickup truck as a matter of fact it won't be for everybody but the thing is is this car needs to be for everybody pickup trucks is a big market especially here in the united states if tesla wants to compete 
then uh, they really need to make sure that it looks great, but it's still people who like pickup trucks and they actually want to buy this thing. And of course, it needs to have the utility purpose, uh, um, you know, met with, of, of, of a pickup truck. Uh, Rivian is going to be on their tail for sure. And they have a great product going on. Uh, Ford already invested into them. So Ford obviously will have a Rivian-like uh, technology. Uh, so I, I don't know if this is the time to mess around with futuristic designs and come up with something experimental. I think they might want to kind of roll it back and give it a nice slick look. But um, I wouldn't deviate, deviate it from too much of a reality because they need to sell a lot of them. And if not everybody, especially, you know, people who like trucks, they're not exactly into design anyway. So I think usability and the price and, and, and other features that they can offer would, would really be much, much more impor important. Let me know. Do you think I missed something from this list? And we're talking about just 2019, five things that they need to accomplish by the end of this year. Uh, while you're doing that, a quick shout out to one of my newer Patreons, Kyle Mahan. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon community. The only place that you can watch me live. And of course, thank you for supporting uh, my independent channel. And uh, you can go to patreon.com slash e4electric to do the same. And while you're there, also go to this URL, e4electric.com slash VIP. And then you can get on our VIP list, which is our bonus story that we send out every Saturday. It's free, so sign up. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to your uh, comments. Let me know if I missed something, or maybe my priority list is off. Uh, we'll be glad to uh, be uh, corrected there. Other than that, see you next time, and remember to stay charged.